Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of I Hold Shift TV, all you rageaholics, and, well, otherwise. This is going to be a little bit of a different video for you guys. Uh, we're doing something just a little bit, just on the, I don't know, just something a little different. Got some Hunter gameplay coming for you guys here in just a hot second. I believe this was a 1v duos game, too. I don't remember. This was a while back before I went on a little, I won't say vacation, but some of you may have remembered that I was back in the High res Studios just last week when they were exclusivizing the Realm Royale stream channel and the game had just gone live and got the chance to interact with a lot of different people that were either streaming on the channel or were devs of the game. And I kind of wanted to give a little bit of insight as far as what is the back opening of this game and where could we expect this game to go? This is not anything that's an NDA release or anything like that, just kind of thoughts and reactions. So why not give a little bit of an insight and just a little bit of a look at what we might be able to expect from Realm Royale. Obviously, if you've wandered across this video, you've probably played a handful of games so far, and maybe you want to get a little bit more information. Well, I'll tell you something. This game caught Hyrus by absolute surprise when it came down to its wild success. Let me say that again. It caught Hyrus by surprise. They did not expect this game to go off as well as it has so far, simply due to the fact that, well, there is no marketing behind it. But what's caught on? Well, it's a very unique game. It's got all these different class, different abilities, and all that stuff. It makes you feel almost more like you're in an MMO. Kind of like you're going back to the old days of playing WoW PvP, maybe. I'm actually not one who's ever played that, so I don't even know why I would make that reference. But that's what I've been kind of gathering from people at the office, people who've been playing the game, is that it has this sense of odd nostalgia back to the days of very just common MMO type gameplay. And on top of that, it also brings in that dopamine rush when you get into those big fights and there's all this movement going on and abilities being thrown out and a bunch of weapons being shot at one another. And of course, the chicken escape is great. You can't love but try to dance yourself through windows, especially when you get through it. So all of these little elements, I think, have really combined to create something pretty special. But where do we go from here? That's the big question. A lot of people have already thrown some caution into the wind by saying that some of these changes that have been made to the game, whether it's gunplay specifically, have been very radical. And it kind of seems like the direction is somewhat lost. Well, I am prone to disagree with that. I think that what Hyrus is trying to do is to find that, you know, that other part of the game that can be really unique. You know, the all projectile based weaponry has got a couple people up in roughs about, you know, it's, well, I don't really like this. It's slowing the game down. People are just corner peeking all the time. And I'm prone to agree with some of that. But at the same point, think about the play that they could have by just speeding up projectiles, speeding up fire rates. It can make the game feel a lot more fluid without just having everything be quote unquote hit scan. So there's something that I think there's an opportunity there. The spells, obviously, and the armors, well, not the armors necessarily, but the spells and the weaponry, those can also be kind of iterated on a very high level as far as how much is in the game, how much diversity is there, not to mention there could be the opportunity for other classes. There's just so much that could be done with the game, and I think that a lot of people are putting a look at what the changes have been and said, well, why can we not just get something that we know for sure will be successful? Well, I think that's the big statement is they don't know exactly what the success is going to be of this game as far as what is going to be the most identifiable aspect uh, to the player base. So there's a lot to consider when it comes down to how the game is going to move in its future. And I'm really excited to see how it moves forward, as I'm sure most of you are. Now, also while I was there, I had a chance to meet with two members of the community team. They were the community managers of Realm Royale. And, uh, well, first of all, neither of them had much sleep after, you know, again, not knowing that this game was going to take off like it did. But beyond that, not having the people to help out. Uh, they are still very passionate, excited people as well, and I, I encourage you guys all to try to get in touch and uh, and kind of get to know these guys. Jay Nash being one of them, Epip the other. Both really awesome guys, very helpful. Um, but the big thing that I want to kind of hit on when it comes to you know how you as a community member can help grow this game. Well, Hyrus has always been one of those companies that has always been very in tune or tried to be very in tune with their player base. And we've already seen so many instances of that. Yes, there's been a lot of flack of, well, why has the mage not been nerfed yet? It's been OP for now. It's been OP forever. It hasn't been that long. It's only been a couple of days. And on the opposite side of things, take a look at Drybear. If you don't already follow High Rise Drybear on Twitter, make sure you do because he was the, the, the lead developer on Paladins for a long time. And the game took a lot of radical transformations, mostly based off of not only his creative ideas, but also all the feedback that was given from the Paladins community. Just recently this week, he's already posted a handful of times asking for the feedback of weaponry, what are the favorite and least favorite parts of the game. 
And how can you make this experience, or probably how can he make this experience better for all of you? Uh, it, well, all of us, I should say. I, I want to include myself there because I filled out all those feedback forms. So I would say make sure that you guys go and you do those things. Fill out those little Google Doc surveys and stuff like that because that information is crucial to a company that, again, didn't expect the success of this game. The team that's working on it even still is rather small. They need to get the help. They need the feedback. They will they maybe not need it, but they definitely want it to make sure that the game that they build from the ground up has you guys in mind. Well, again, has us in mind. It's really, really important to do that. So don't just assume that someone else will do it for you. Go out there and do it. So follow Hi-Rez Drybear on Twitter. Give your feedback to him. Message him. Send him tweets. He's a very open guy. Loves to talk with the player base. And it would be really cool to see us all kind of getting there and helping out with making this game something very special. Uh, but beyond that, you know, as you take a look at where the game could go, you know, with that kind of interaction, there's a lot of things that could happen still. And I think that's the big key, is that what could happen. It's not what is happening. This is still an alpha, after all. Wow, that was actually a pretty dirty shot. Uh... It's still an alpha, so there's a lot of things that need to happen to the game on a technical side before it can even be reiterated with balance, additions, and of course all the content, uh, like things like mounts and chicken skins and ret weapon skins and stuff like that. So I would say, you know, keep in mind Hi-Rez is one of those companies that is really, really in tune with its community and likes to stay at a point where they want you guys to be involved just as much as they are themselves are involved. Um, and that's a really interesting thing to see how this game can transform and adjust and be something really unique uh, Beyond that I want to hit one other thing and this is going to be a kind of a lengthier part of the conversation How about the competitive side of this game of realm royale? I'm sure most of you have seen some instances of the competitive side of the game being talked about on a Casual level with things like the UMG gaming events happening just this last weekend. They had two different tournaments that were hosted um, I God, they were hosted. They were hosted. We'll just say that much. Um, they were open entry, $100 prize pool for the top two teams. Not bad. Something to kind of get yourselves involved with. But also on the opposite side of things, something a little bit more uh, notorious and prestigious. How about Keemstar? He recently posted on his Twitter saying he was interested in getting involved in Realm Royale and the competitive side of things. But beyond that, it wasn't just getting involved. It was possibly throwing weekly tournaments at a prize pool of potentially fifty to $100,000. Now, how much of this will actually happen? Who knows? I have to imagine a guy like Keemstar will not lie to you about what he's trying to do with the competitive event, especially after his Fortnite Fridays did so well. But what is the world and the space? for Realm Royale competitive to be here. Is it something that is really, is it ready for it? Do you still have to, you know, do we have to get to a point where the game needs to be more developed? Is this too early? Is forcing esports going to be the death of this potentially? You also re remember back if you follow High res Stu, one of the higher ups at High res he had posted on his Twitter saying, what would you guys think if I got enough retweets to try to convince my boss to throw a $1 million tournament at High res Expo? That's coming up in the middle part of November. Are these moves correct? I personally am prone to say this game is nowhere near ready for the competitive aspect. And talking with people in the esports department, they're not sure exactly what the future of this game would look like, nor are they really considering it simply because of the fact that it is brand new. And there are still a lot of things that need to happen to the game in order to make it successful on the base level, let alone the competitive level. I don't know. I, I would love to see this game competitive. I feel like it would be an awesome experience. I think there's something very innately unique about this game when it comes down to it being a competitive experience. However, here's the thing about it. There has not yet been a single iteration of competitive BR that has been ran, I would say, on a successful level. Uh, you see, of course, the Fortnite announcement with the $100 million prize pool over the next calendar year, and that's an incredible amount of money. But you even look back at the Fortnite Pro-Am that was just previously ran, and for me, you have to kind of wonder, is that exactly the event style that that game needs to be successful competitively? Because uh, as fun as it was to watch all these, you know, quote-unquote pros playing with a bunch of uh, celebrities... There was a lot involved with that game that just, again, felt really clunky. It felt like it just did not... I don't know. It just felt like it wasn't at the point where it was ready to be there. But the spectator experience was okay. I mean, of course, all of the building that goes on makes it very difficult to follow. It's kind of like watching competitive Overwatch on a certain level. If you're just following along with a Tracer or a Genji, 
if you're a newer viewer, you might not know what exactly you're watching. It might just be nothing but nonsense, nonsense and chaos. So what do you do for a game like this? The interesting thing about this style of game, and I don't remember where I read this, but it was an article that was posted somewhere in my Discord that was floating around about competitive BRs. Can you potentially do the spectator experience like golf does it right now, where you have people on a desk that cover the overarching views of the game, all of the things that are, you know, kind of the big picture storylines following along with the big teams, but then you also have a group of casters that are specifically assigned to certain regions to cover the fights or specifically follow along with certain teams that are either on the rise or near the top of the leaderboard. There are a lot of things to consider when it comes to making a successful spectator sport out of Battle Royale. So obviously, the genre is not going anywhere anytime soon, even though there was that giant influx at E3 with, oh, here's another BR, here's another BR, here's another BR, and there's a lot of lashback from the Fortnite community as far as why is everyone keep trying to do Battle Royales, like, let us just do ours, but <laughs> let's be honest, it's not going away, and this is obviously something that's caught on with the general population uh, in, in the world, not just in the Western world or the esports world. A lot of people are playing Battle Royale games, so how do you expose that market of having this competitive side of things. And I think the answer simply is the game has to be in a st spot where it's ready. I think if you start throwing a million, if you throw a million dollar tournament at this game at HRX, I don't know if that's gonna be successful for the game's health. There are a lot of things that still need to go in. There's still a number of bugs that are going on. And it kind of comes down to, can you be in a position to have this game be showcased while also hitting that niche genre of wanting to have your eSport be focused and those competitive-minded players have something that they can play in. I think there's a lot to be considered, and to be honest, I think things like a $1 million tournament at HRX, which is just in a couple of months, I think would be innately uh, not so much successful. I can't believe that guy stole my kill, by the way. I was pretty upset about that. Granted, I missed like four arrows, so I can't really be too mad. But what about these weekly tournaments? The format right now, some of you might be familiar with, some of you might not be, is it is a, a 2v2 situation where it is an entire bracket uh, set up kind of like a March Madness bracket, just a normal stylized bracket, but it's your team of two versus another team of two. But with no custom games, you might be wondering, well, how does that work? So what happens is the duo that you're in invites the duo that you're playing up against into a squad. And then you drop in and the team that pulls the most kills in that certain random public game gets credited with the map one and they move on to the tournament. So essentially, what you're doing right now is playing in a 2v squads game for the most kills. And often that turns into, okay, well, we dropped somewhere high population, we got killed off the bat, the other team survived, so they win. It's very, um, I would say, not so, so exciting as far as the eSport goes right now, but that's the only way of doing it. So the question that I pose is, is this style of quote-unquote tournament even really remotely what the game needs to be fueled on a competitive level? I think there's room for it. I think this is an idea that in the moment, this could definitely put you in a spot to get quote-unquote competitive and get yourself in a spot to really go for kills. And it is very innately fun to watch on a certain level because, again, it is all about getting kills. The games don't last forever. You don't see camping. So there are pros and cons of it. The big thing about it is, will this be the successful platform for the future? I don't know if it will be, simply because this game, unlike Fortnite, you, it's a hard, you have a very difficult time, to be honest. You have to be really good to survive through a 2v squads game. A couple of things have to happen. Number one, you have to be able to take four people at once. But number two, you have to be smart enough to know when to rotate. But on top of that, you also have to have a pretty good principle of luck when it comes down to being able to uh, make sure that your squad that you're playing up against is not able to handle just the two of you. you have, they have to be kind of disjointed and you have to be kind of lucky with who you get dropped into. So, I don't know. These principles of it make it very interesting. I don't really know if this is the answer for the competitive scene. I don't. Is it worth it right now? Sure, why not? As far as the format goes, eventually, of course, you want to be able to see a custom game format or at least some kind of a backdoor open where certain players can get into a custom game so you can get these style tournaments more like the PUBG Invitationals that we've seen. I think that's probably the best. You don't get the chance... What I was going off of it. I forgot my train of thought for a second there before we finish this up. The fact of the matter is you can't build in this game. So taking on good squads, well, it's it's difficult to do because you can't just build instant cover and try to focus target one target at a time. It becomes a lot more innately difficult to make things happen as a 2v squad in this game because of how bursty some champions can be. <coughs> Mage. <coughs> uh, but that's beyond the point. 
I think that for right now, this is totally fine. I think it's a way to get people interested in the competitive side of the game. Sorry about that. I stole that from that guy. Whoopsies. But here comes the 15 kill ending. It's been a lot of fun being with you guys. Just a little conversation starter. I don't know if this style of video is successful. Let me know what you think. If you think this is annoying, you didn't even watch all the way through it, feel free to let me know. If you did watch through it and you enjoyed it, feel free to let me know that too. I'd be happy to get to see what other kind of content we can create uh, with you guys besides just the tips and tricks videos, which of course the next one will be coming out here pretty soon. We're going to be doing the 10 tricks in five minutes for every single champion. So make sure you stay tuned to that. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to download it too, I guess I don't really mind too much. Of course, you can catch me live on Twitch over on twitch.tv slash iHoldShift. And of course, also on Twitter at iHoldShift. Good to have you guys. Keep raging on. And until next time, we hope that you keep holding it down.